Yo, it's Keku, and today we're going to be talking about the inspiration behind this Powers of Words and I Expected to God. So I just wanted to come on here and give my whole kind of, uh, I guess, opinion on my own book and why I wrote it in the first place and why why I hold this story dear to my heart and why I like it so much and why it kind of takes inspiration from other anime. This video is going to be a uh, medium length, so if you're not ready for that, then you can just uh, come back later and you know just just come back later and just kind of come back to enjoy the whole video i don't know how long this video is going to be but i do tend to ramble on a lot so that if that's something you're not comfortable with then you can leave um fuck you these nuts got them but yeah the inspiration behind the the whole story the whole premise was to basically to basically grasp the whole otaku's mind about fear and what how the otaku mind kind of thinks and how the otaku mind is i think all of us speaking from an otaku that since uh, the age of nine i think all of us want to be special because we see all of our uh, anime characters or favorite anime characters being special and we see all of them being inspirational and having great willpower and great will strength and that's what inspires us to become stronger in our every day to day's lives right but what we fear is not being special we see all these anime characters being special, like Goku, Luffy, Deku, Naruto, Asta. We see them all break the bounds, and we want to be just like them. But the thing is, that's not reality. There's no magic. There's no Nen. There's no. There's no chakra. There's no power system. There's there's no cute anime girls. There's no cute lollies. There's there's no there's no chance of you getting a girlfriend. Uh, there's, there's, there, you're not gonna get your own harem. You're not gonna be transported to another world. I could go on and on for days about certain anime topics, but that's just gonna be the short end of it. We all want these things to exist deeper in our hearts because we see how fun they can be. We see, we see what what can be happen when we could do stuff. We wish we could do the uh, Kamehameha. We wish we could, we wish we could do Rasengan. We wish we could, we wish we could do a bunch of anime moves. All right. Don't tell me you never tried to do one, or you never replicated one, or you never did those cringy ass Naruto hand, uh, hand signs. If you said you haven't and you never done that, then you're a fucking liar, and you need to die right now, cause you're lying to me, and do not lie to me. Yeah, but, but we all want that, and the the premise behind this story is that all this stuff powers become into reality by the main character, and it kind of revolves around the main character getting into certain hishaps with the government and government and the uh and the people who have, oh, other people who have powers in the universe on earth and the difference between any other anime story in this one is kind of like you would expect everything to go the main character's way because he even he means to uh liking shonen protagonist he's a degenerate he likes isekais, he likes those basic niche isekais where the main character is overpowered as shit and has a harem, he loves that shit. Even though he, even though one of his wish gets granted for him to, uh, for everything in the world, superpowers to come to life. Even though this wish is granted to him, it just pops out of nowhere, it doesn't really, when he, when he likes, when he, when he imagines these powers come to life, when he sees them, he doesn't really like them in particular for certain reasons that I won't get into because of spoilers but he doesn't like them so you would expect this this guy to be a, a major shonen protagonist and I mean you're not far from the truth but the difference between him is that this is in hit to him it's real world Japan to him it's real world Japan superpowers are normal superpowers are not normal superpowers are not existing in this time frame he's been buoyed ever since he moved to Japan 10 years ago been bullied and he's been believing the fact that anime and japan were the same thing and when he came to japan he was hoping that that was the truth but no he was really killed for 10 years and then he became somewhat depressed eh, but he, he had friends with him to keep him down from dark times and they, he had friends to occupy him and friends with similar interests but it's just like him going through a whole 10 years in japan realizing that anime is not japan being woken up and then when powers appear just in front of him, it just it's kind of make him confused. It makes him feel wrong. The inspiration behind this is my own writing evolution. If you if you read it, it's the description down below, you can tell that each chapter 
gets better and better and better. Each chapter gets more word, gets more wordy, gets more better, gets gets worse in some cases. Uh, it's all up to interpretation. Interpre- interpretation. Uh, I believe I've grown from a, a, a writer that just did nothing, couldn't do anything major, just wrote about bullshit. And then I evolved from that to this. Because this book had fucking three or four prompts. I had a terrible prompt that, that gave away the whole sub- synopsis of God and everything else. And I had something else entirely different. It was all about the same premise though. But there were no friends. But I, I excluded that and I made it something better. Uh, but yeah. The inspiration is kind of like... Taking from anime other anime qualities. Making the main character like anime... So that inspires him to become a better person. And he thinks he's a bad person. Which is not far from the truth. He's selfish. He's pessimistic. He doesn't like to do anything in particular. He's not good at anything in particular. He's he's obnoxious. He likes to copy anime characters for no oblivion reason. And I mean. That's just kind of how he is. He's not really. He's not really like. Good at anything. He's not. He's not supposed to be good at anything. He's just, he's just Alex Zuki. That's all he is. He's just normal. But something unnormal is happening to him, and that's what's changing his life. He thought Japan was normal for ten years, fucking ten years, right? He thought it was normal for ten years, and then it's just one day, boom, he can stop time. Boom, a demonic voice is in his head. Boom, and 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 an angelic voice is in his head. But all that shit just boggles him. You can't. You can't tell me that wouldn't boggle you. He's been taught something for 10 years. And then finally, when that thing comes true, you already adapted and you're, and you're starting to accept that an amazing real like Japan. And then this shit just happens. And he's not happy with it. Because he's just repeating everything. He's just repeating everything that everyone else told him that an amazing re- wasn't real. <laughs> he's just repeating everything and he's just denying it. He can't come to truth with, with, with his reality. Because he's been taught that for such a long time. But yeah. It's been your boy Keku. And I'm out. Peace. Make sure to go uh, read the light novel. It's at chapter 2 right now. Each chapter we're going to have 3 parts. And I'm going to be uploading it every Sunday. Until I hit chapter 5. And then I'm going to have to get something uh, edited. But yeah. Until chapter 5. Chap- part 3. That's going to be cha- uh, 1 chapter per week. Sunday, one chapter every Sunday, because Sunday equals God and church and shit like that, and that's when I'm off, so, yeah, go read it, it's at chapter two right now, peace.